Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this snowflake striped foil and double sided sheet tumbler. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I started with a fully prepped and sanded 20 ounce skinny with handle and I painted it with Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint using Winchester Blue and Robin's Egg Blue and those are both available on the Cami Page Boutique website. Then I mixed up about 10 milliliters of epoxy and I went through and just applied a super thin coat over the entire surface of the cup. Now typically I use is the least amount of epoxy possible, but since we were going to be layering this ombre, I put a little bit more on just to make sure that I had plenty of coverage. The first glitter I grab is Lucid Dreams from Peachy Olive Glitters. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking the littlest bit between just like my pointer finger and thumb and sprinkling it really focusing on the center of the tumbler. The reason why I start with this first is because this is the chunkiest of all the glitters I will be using and I wanna lay it down so that you get these nice kind of pops of this lighter blue throughout the entire surface of the cup. Once I was done with that, I grabbed Tinkerbell, also from Peachy Yellow Glitters, and I focused on the center of this cup. So you can see there, I'm just putting a band down, just keeping the cup completely parallel and then I will angle the cup down to a 45 degree angle and I will just start to lightly sprinkle that Tinkerbell down and start to cascade it into the darker blue that you see there. So I start towards the top rim and then I start to the bottom rim just lightly kind of laying down the glitter to get that kind of road map of what we'll be using. So once I'm happy with that coverage I'm going to come in with dress blues again from Peachy Olive Glitters and I am going to start at the butt of the cup and holding the cup at again a 45 degree angle downward I'm just going to lightly start to sprinkle this dress blues into the Tinkerbell just to kind of blend the two colors now this is an ombre so just feel like don't feel well, don't feel like you have to get it right on the first time go back and forth until you get the blend that you're happy with this is why I use the epoxy method for my ombres so I get that working time so I get the blend until I'm like just get the blend and work with it until you're happy with it. So I finished the butt and then it was time for the top rim, just holding the cup at the other angle and again, lightly sprinkling that glitter into the Tinkerbell that we had started before. Now, one thing I like is sometimes the shakers don't make it as easy to blend my colors when doing an ombre. So a little hack is just to use the medicine cup. Once I was happy with the coverage, spray sealed it twice and went in with a coat of, actually two coats of epoxy, about 15, to 20 milliliters each each time once that was done I let that fully dry and then it was time to tape off both like both around the top and the bottom of this handle as you can see right here now, the reason why we are doing this is because I wanted to do a bright white handle and I did not want to get any of that white paint on the amazing ombre that you see there. So I am just taking little pieces of painter's tape and just taping off the base of the handle. So again, we'll do this at the top of the handle and then at the bottom just to make sure that we're protecting the surface that we just created right there. Once we have the top taped off, we'll move to the bottom and just repeat the same process that we did above, and then it's time to paint our handle. For the handle, I am just gonna be using white paint from the Michaels brand, um, I think it's called Craft Smart. And I'm using this concealer brush from Wet n Wild. I got it from the dollar store and I'm pretty obsessed with it. It's quickly becoming my favorite brush, but I am just going to come in with my paintbrush and just do one coat of the paint that you see here and then what I'm going to do is I am going to let that dry and then I am going to mix in a little bit of Artistry's glitter glue to apply our glitter. Now you could have added the glitter glue to the first coat as well. It's just sometimes with whites they don't cover the best so I'm just kind of a stickler for doing two coats. You could absolutely just mix the glitter glue in with the first coat but I decided not to. So I'm just gonna do this first coat like I said, let it dry and then I'm going to grab the glitter glue and you'll see there you just need like the tiniest bit and my wonderful hand is in the way but you can kind of see there. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glitter glue in the paint that was already on the palette. Mix 
it together and then come in and just do another coat over the handle. The reason why I like glitter glue, um, granted it does not give me the working time that the epoxy method does, but it still gives me a really good amount of time to really coat this handle, get every angle, because I swear no matter how many times I check, I will always miss some spot when doing this. But glitter glue does give me the flexibility to do that. So I'm just gonna come in, apply it over the entire surface of the handle, and then we are going to be using Frosty from Peachy Olive Glitter. And let me tell you, I did not know that I needed this glitter in my life. It is a beautiful white mix but it's also got little bits of silver in there and five point silver stars. So it is absolutely beautiful. I did not even know how much I needed this glitter. So I highly, highly, highly recommend it. But we are just going to coat that handle, let it dry and then carefully remove the tape. Seal the glitter and then go in with a coat of epoxy just on the handle. Once the epoxy was dry, I grabbed my ultimate guide tool and I am just making two guidelines in the middle of the cup right around the handle. So you can see it there and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the handle. You're probably like, what the heck are you doing? What I'm doing is I am using these to kind of create the guide or almost like a template to start to lay the stripes out on the cup that we'll be using for our double sided tape. So having them there in the middle, I find is super helpful. It helps me to keep it straighter than if I were just to use the handle as a guide, so I highly recommend it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, you are going to need a lot of tape for this step of the process, but what I'm doing is I'm using half inch tape, and again, I'm using these as the guide for my lines that we'll be doing. So I'm starting just with regular masking tape, and then we're going to do a pattern. So I have a thicker, double-sided tape here. So I would say this is probably like a half inch as well. And what I'm doing is I'm coming in next to the masking tape that you see there, and I'm using it as a guide to get the stripes laid out on the cup. So you can see there, again, we started with the first line um, for the masking tape, and now we're coming in with a double-sided tape. Then I'm going to come in with a thinner tape to the side of the thicker double-sided tape apply that to the cup and then I have a thinner double-sided tape. This one is about a quarter of an inch. So once we have that applied, we're going to repeat the pattern. And now I know this seems like a lot, but I promise it's pretty easy to follow. So we have our first kind of set down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull the half inch masking tape up and move it to the side of the quarter inch double sided tape like you see there. So I'm gonna put the masking tape back down. Then I'm going to grab the thicker double sided tape and come in to the side of the masking tape. So you you can kind of see it's a template. It's super easy to follow. I promise I'm probably explaining this a lot more complicated is that a word that I need to? But yeah, so I have the thicker um, double-sided tape down. Now I'm gonna come in with the thinner masking tape, and then I will grab the thinner double-sided tape and put it to the next, um, next to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely follow this pattern around the entire surface of the cup until I come back to the handle. Now, even though I measured it and um, it was a good, like I think it was like a perfect like two and a half or an inch and a half, I can't remember off the top of my head. I did end up putting an extra piece of the thin double-sided tape just to make sure that there wasn't some wonky space there, but you can do what absolutely floats your boat. But I'm just going to follow this template completely around and I'm using my ultimate guide tool to make sure that I'm keeping them as straight as possible because you can see there that these tapes like to curve on you and using the guide tool really helps you to kind of straighten them back out. Now, it does not need to be perfect. We're going to be adding a bunch of different design elements over the top of it, so do not overly stress out about this. Again, you're making something handmade and it will be absolutely beautiful. Now, I wanted to show you what I did when I got back to the handle. So I just took some alcohol on a magic eraser and I scrubbed off the lines from the paint marker that we used. And again, you can see it was kind of uneven when we got to the handle. So I just took the red masking tape again, and then I came in with the thinner double-sided tape just to kind of fill in that space a little bit more. I just wanted to show this because I know I mentioned it, but sometimes doing it visually is a little more helpful. 
Once all of our stripes are applied, it's time to make the double-sided tape nice and even around the cup. So what I did is with a super sharp blade, I just went around the top and I just kind of took off the excess of the double-sided tape. Now this can be kind of a pain in the butt just because um, it is a lot thicker than what you typically use your vinyl for. Um, now again, I'm telling you I used a super sharp blade, but I did change it halfway through because it wasn't, it was pretty dull and it was causing me headaches. So you Use a super sharp blade, do what I recommend, not necessarily what I'm doing here, but started at the top rim and then I came through at the bottom rim and did the same thing. Now, you just want to kind of roughly trim these out. What we're going to do is actually use um, the vinyl cutter from Cami Page Boutique that you see there. So we are just trying to get a lot of that excess off um, that would prevent the cup from sitting level on the cup trimmer. Now you probably don't have to do this, it's just me being extra, but I just like to make sure that my cup is completely flat so that I have a perfectly straight line um, around the bottom as I move into using the cup cutter. So this is probably extra work that you don't have to do, it's just this is what I did so I wanted to show you guys how and what I did during making this cup. Once I had all of that removed, I just pushed down the double-sided tape and then just spun it on the cup cutter like you see here. Um, this blade is super, it's like a lot bigger than some of the other cutters out there, so it just easily took off those pieces and was able to cut through all the layers of the double-sided tape. Um, it just had a sticky part, so I had to clean it up a little bit, but just take your time, make sure it's all cleaned up, but you can see that you'll get a perfectly straight line. And then it was time to start doing the fun stuff. Now I say that super facetiously, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the tape for one stripe at a time. And I highly recommend the one stripe at a time, otherwise you're gonna get foil in places that you don't want. So just um, apply the paper backing from one of the stripes and this foil is from Artistic Painting Studio. I absolutely love it. It just has a ton of dimension to it and it kind of reminded me of just like frosty winter scenery so that's why I chose it. Now here I using a toothbrush to apply the foil at first and it was a pain in the buttocks. I completely I don't know, it just like, it worked in the past, it just was not working this time. I actually found that using my fake acrylic nails to kind of rub the foil onto the double-sided tape works the best. I know that's probably totally, I don't know what the word is, but um, I was just struggling with the toothbrush, but using my nail worked really well. I also think if you have any of like those wood, um, they kind of look like a ruler, but you use them to apply transfers to cups, I think that would work really well. But I found that using my nail worked better than the toothbrush, but use whatever works for you because up to this point, the toothbrush worked fine. So all we're going to do is just move around the cup, trying to use um, as little little foil as possible like so don't just like go in the middle of it I'm trying to keep the stripes pretty close together as I apply them but just moving around the cup applying the foil to the double-sided tape and you'll see that I know I've mentioned it in a couple of my TikToks and on lives I really like applying foil to either um, the tacky sheets or um, shape tape or the double-sided tape because I think it gets really great coverage so it's my favorite way to apply foils um, it was just doing this in a different little bit different by using the double double-sided tape versus kind of like the cutout shapes that we'd used before. But hint, hint, spoiler alert, that's what we're gonna be doing in just a minute. So just move around the cup until you've got the coverage of the foil that you like. Um, really, so you can see there, I'm starting to use my finger and it just worked so much better. Um, just apply the foils until you're happy with them. And then um, you do not need to seal the foils, but I did go in with a coat of epoxy after I got all the beautiful stripage done. And then it was time to move to the next step. Once that epoxy was dry, I grabbed this beautiful, white ink snowflake sheet from AB Design Co. And I just cut out a couple of the snowflakes and applied them to the surface of the tumbler. Now, the awesome thing about this sheet is that it comes with several different size snowflakes and the white ink just stands out so wonderfully over those dark glitters. So I am just going to move around the surface of the cup and just select different snowflakes to apply to this tumbler. Now, the awesome thing, and I know I say, keep on saying awesome thing, is 
that there's so many snowflakes on there and with the three different sizes that you could do several projects with one sheet. So it's really nice to be able to spread them out as we're creating all kinds of winter wonderland goodness this time of the year. Now I am making sure to leave a space for my decal right there and you can also, if you're more comfortable, apply these using transfer tape. I just simply cut them out, removed the paper backing and applied them to my cup. But please do whatever makes you the most comfortable and add as few or as many snowflakes as you like. Now, if you're happy with the decals and the way that that looks, you can absolutely just apply a decal that says something cute or wintery to the cup, doing a coats of epoxy and you're done. However, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So what I'm doing here is I put down a permanent piece of white vinyl. So that's what's attached to my Cricut mat right there. Then I'm taking shape tape from Artistry Epoxy. This is just any kind of um, double-sided sticky sheets. You could use cat scratch paper. Shape tape is just my favorite because it is so sticky and it works really well. But I am just removing the paper backing like you see there. And I am using a squeegee to push the shape tape down on top of the white vinyl. Now, the reason why we are doing this is because I want the shape tape, which is just that clear sheet to have a white backing when we apply it to the cup. So you just take off the paper back and apply it just like you do any kind of normal vinyl wrap and then just trim it to be the size of your vinyl. I know it's hard to see, but what I then did is I loaded um, Snowflake SVGs and I'll have the snowflakes that I use listed below in the description. And I cut them on my Cricut using the fabric setting. So I have a Cricut Explorer 2. So I cut these decals using the fabric setting on my Cricut and just cut out the normal snowflakes. Now I did them about an inch and a half, but also I cut out a larger snowflake that will be my decal. So this looks pretty tedious here and I'm just really making sure to take my time. But what you'll see here is I am removing the double sided tape or like the shape tape that you see there and the vinyl from the decals that I cut off. So I'm leaving the top layer of the paper of the shape tape and the vinyl there and then just removing all of the extra excess and you're probably like why the heck are you doing this the reason why is we are going to apply these snowflakes to the surface of our cup and then apply glitter over the top of them because I wanted some extra sparkliness to the snowflakes that we're applying to the tumbler. So this is an extra step and I think it adds so much detail to the cup and I really love the way this turned out. So again, I cut these at an inch and a half tall, which they're squares, so it was an inch and a half everywhere. And then I cut the larger decal that you'll see here at three and a half inches wide. So you can see that this is a more a simple um, decal and then I also cut out the middle let it snow now one thing I will say I wish I just would have later layered let it snow over the top of it because it is kind of harder to see once you get it onto the cup but that is just my opinion it, you can still read it but it was just something that I wish I wouldn't have done because with the dark background behind it it's just a little bit harder to read so I'm going to come in with transfer tape now and I am just going to cut out the individual snowflakes I didn't have it pushed down well enough but I am using transfer tape but I did put it on my shirt first to make sure that the tackiness was kind of off of it a little bit but you can see here that I'm going to line up the let it snow and I'm just starting with the larger decal and because I want to make sure that these are really pushed down I apply the center of the decal first and then come in with my squeegee to really 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 make sure that it's well and pushed down to the cup and because I removed that tackiness of the transfer tape first before I applied the decal, the paper top coat for the double-sided tape or the sticky sheets that you see there is staying in place. So you can see I got that first decal applied. Then I'm going to come in and remove the paper, which if you want to take the paper off with the transfer tape, that's fine. But then I'm going to come in with a frosty and I am just going to come over the top of the double-sided tape and then just use my finger to really push it in to that shape tape that we applied. What you'll see is that you get this beautiful spike sparkle and added detail to the cup that 
it just comes out so beautifully. Then I'm gonna come in with a chip brush and wipe away the excess and you guys can see just how wonderfully sparkly and beautiful this method really is for applying added glitter detail to your cups. Now, all we're going to do is apply the other snowflakes that we cut out to the remainder of the cup. Now, I really wanted to layer the um, shape tape snowflakes over the white decal ones that we had already applied. And I did that because I wanted it to look like there was actually snow falling and it was pretty dimensional. So I hope that makes sense. So like almost like there's snowflakes in the background, but there's snowflakes in this foreground that are a little more sparkly. Um, so that's what I did. So just going around the cup, removing that tape, sprinkling on Frosty. Again, I don't know if I said that earlier, but that is that beautiful white glitter that we applied to the handle and just making sure that it is all nicely pushed down and then coming in with the glitter rubbing it into the surface of the shape tape and it just sticks so beautifully and I think it's just a really nice added detail that I truly believe brought this whole cup together. Once you are happy with all of the snowflake placements, you are going to want to spray seal this. I just used Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint. And the reason why is I just didn't want to take a chance of any of the glitter moving. And that way I could make sure that it's nice and stuck in place before moving on to our final coats of epoxy. I went in with a coat of epoxy just to make sure that my snowflakes were nice and sealed in. And then it was time to do any sanding if there was pokey bits from any of the other design elements that we had. So I just started at the rim with my 120 grit flat wheel just to expose that top rim for our final coats of epoxy. So I just took my time just moving around the surface of the cup. Then I'm going to grab my sanding block and just smooth out any rough edges. And then I'm going to move to the sides of the cup and just make sure that I'm hitting any kind of uneven surfaces or pokey bits like I said to make sure that our final coats of epoxy are perfectly smooth and flawless for our beautiful shine that we are going for. Once I was done with all of my sanding, I wanted to add kind of a frosty bit of goodness to my final coats of epoxy. So I grabbed the Snow Caps Epoxy Additive from AB Design Co. and I just mixed it in to my epoxy. Now this is about 20 milliliters because I wanted to do just like one final kind of flood coat over the surface of the cup to give it that sparkly goodness. And it's really funny because this was just enough that really added like a little bit of I don't know like it's just like frostiness I, I know that's a word I keep on using but it was just perfect and I love the way it just added to the whole design and really kind of gave it that chef's kiss to the overall cup and tumbler that we created here so I'm just going to apply this pop any bubbles with a torch after it is applied let that dry and then I did move in with one final coat of epoxy without the additive in there and then this baby was done I love how this cup turned out and it's almost gonna make those winter months bearable. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you liked this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.